So today we're going to be looking at a combination of functions, examples, uh, looking at all the different ways to combine our functions, and we're going to find uh, the domain and range for each combination. So here are our two functions we're going to look at. f of x is the square root of x plus 2, and g of x is 3x minus 2. Uh, we're going to combine them by adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them, dividing them, and uh, we're going to do a couple of examples of function composition. We have to remember that uh, f composed with g of x and g composed with f of x are not going to give us the same function, so we have to look at those examples separately. So let's start with our addition. Uh, f plus g of x is going to be equal to f of x plus g of x, so if we just add our two functions, this is what we'll get as our uh, addition function. And finding the domain and the range, uh, the domain is fairly easy. Um, just like when you're using a normal example, uh, you're going to look for square roots. Uh, make sure that the number inside of the square root is zero or positive, otherwise uh, we have to throw those other values out of the domain. Also, if you have a uh, fraction with a variable in the denominator, uh, you will look for the values that make that denominator zero, and those would also need to be uh, thrown out of the domain. So in this case, uh, we see that in order to make this uh, value inside of the uh, square root zero or positive, we can only take the numbers from negative two to infinity. Uh, for the range, you may not be asked uh, to find the range on fairly complex functions like this, but uh, the easy way to find it is to just graph this function using a graphing calculator or a web-based graphing program, so that's what I'm going to do. So here is the graph of the function, uh, square root of x plus 2 plus 3x minus 2. As expected, we see that the x values start at negative 2 and uh, it turns out the y values uh, for that are going to be uh, negative 8 and increasing as x increases. So uh, we can tell from this graph pretty easily that our range is going to be uh, the numbers from negative 8 to infinity, including negative 8. Our subtraction of functions is going to give us something fairly similar. Uh, we need to put the g of x in parentheses here so that when we subtract it we just change the sign of the two terms. Uh, that'll still give us the same domain because we still have this situation x plus 2 in our square root so we need uh, the numbers that make that uh, 0 or positive inside so that's going to be again negative 2 to infinity. Uh, however, when we graph it, we'll see that we have pretty much that same curve as the addition function, except uh, inverted around the x-axis. So here is our subtraction function graph. Uh, we can see that the x values again start at uh, negative 2, and that's going to be uh, at the point negative 2, 8, and our uh, y values will be decreasing uh, as x increases, so uh, we can see that our range of our function is uh, the numbers from negative infinity to 8, including 8. Here's our multiplication function, uh, f of x times g of x, so we just put g of x in parentheses, and we consider the function to be the uh, multiplication of uh, these two terms. So. Uh, again, domain is easy. Uh, we're only concerned with our square root because this doesn't pose a problem. We need uh, positive values inside. Uh, the range is a little bit different for this one because the uh, graph looks uh, quite a bit different from our first two curves. So this is our graph of the multiplication function. Uh, we can see again it starts at negative 2 for our x values. The y values look like they dip. Uh, and they reach a minimum value at negative uh, 5.028 and then they uh, start increasing from there. So uh, this is our low point or our minimum on our graph so this will be the low point of the range. So we can see that the y values go from around negative 5.028 uh, to infinity. Our division function will look like this, uh, square root of x plus 2 over 3x minus 2. So uh, the domain will look a little different because now we've got both of the situations uh, that we always look for when we're figuring a domain. Uh, we have our square root of x plus 2 as our numerator, so we need the uh, 
numbers that will make that positive, which will be negative 2 to infinity. But now we have this problem. We've got our g of x uh, function as our denominator, and this is possible to make this a 0 at the point 2 thirds. So we need to exclude 2 thirds from our domain. So this is how we write our domain, the union of the interval from negative 2 to 2 thirds, union the uh, interval from 2 thirds to infinity. Our range is actually all real numbers, so uh, that's a little bit different than our other ranges. Let's see the graph uh, to see why that is true. So here's our graph of the uh, division function, and again we our x values start at negative 2, and they uh, will drop rapidly as uh, x gets closer and closer to two-thirds, but we remember that x can never be two-thirds because that will give us a zero denominator. So um, it looks like we're going to get the y values from zero to negative infinity uh, in our first uh, part of this curve. Our second part uh, picks up when x is just slightly more than two-thirds, and we can see that uh, this part of the graph will uh, take the y value and increase it very, very uh, quickly as uh, x approaches two-thirds uh, from this side. So we're going to get all of our numbers uh, up to positive infinity looking at this uh, part of the curve, and we're going to get um, closer and closer to zero as x increases further than that. So. Um, it looks like there are no y values that are excluded from this graph, so we say that our range is all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. Now let's look at the uh, composition of functions. First let's take f of uh, g of x, uh, or f composed with g of x, so we just are basically plugging in the function g of x wherever we see an x uh, in the function f of x. So we plug in a 3x minus 2 where we see an x in the f of x function and simplify and it just becomes the uh, function square root of 3x. So uh, that one is pretty simple as far as the domain and the range. We don't really need to graph it. Uh, the domain again is 0 to infinity so um, we can have a 0 or a positive number inside of our square root. So any positive number or 0 we plug in for x will be fine for that. Any negative number must be excluded from the domain. And the range, uh, when we plug in 0 or a positive number uh, in for x, we're going to get uh, a 0 or a positive number for uh, our f of x. So the range is also 0 to infinity. Uh, let's take uh, g of f of x, and it looks like uh, I made a typo here. That should be an f, uh, but I have it right here. So uh, g of f of x is uh, we're going to plug in the square root of x plus 2 wherever we see an x in the uh, g of x function. So uh, our composition of functions uh, ordered this direction will give us 3 times the square root of x plus 2 minus 2. And uh, for our domain and our range, uh, again, we're going to get a domain of negative 2 to infinity because we need uh, this value inside of the square root to be 0 or positive. And to get our range, it's also fairly simple. We don't really need to graph this. Um, we know that this value will be 0 or positive. Uh, the absolute smallest number we can get is 0 for this. So 3 times 0 is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. So that's how we get our range of negative 2 to infinity for our range. Uh, we see that it, as x increases, then this value, 3 times the square root of x plus 2 minus 2, is also going to increase to infinity. So that's our range. And we are finished. We found our domain and our range for every example. So that's it for today.